Okay. Going to uh, take a drive today. It's still raining. I'm starting to feel better. I've been sick. And uh, trying out my heads up display, which I can't show you right now because my head is the only thing that's up on that display. So uh, I had to find an app for it that would reverse the image to project it, but it looks like it works pretty good. It's just trying to find maps on it. So I'm just using the tablet that's on the dash. I'm in Roxanne. Um, so it was 2015 Ford Taurus, technically police interceptor sedan. Just over 38,000 miles on it. So for a police car, that's like brand new. Um, got 38338.0, no tenths. So I'm gonna probably make a couple of short videos. I was looking on the internet on some stuff, just YouTube videos, and I saw Explore With Us, which I don't know if I subscribed yet, I'm probably going to forgot about the site because I just, I don't know, I remember, I was looking for something and uh, I came across this house that they uh, did a little video on that's up on a cliff and, um, you know, how we do, we do some research on stuff we want, almost like looking up an X on Instagram or something to see uh, what's going on. I don't, because I don't care. But, um, so, I, uh, saw this really cool house on this cliff, up in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of nowhere in the desert, um, uh, belonged to a, uh, since deceased, uh, serviceman that had the name and everything on, which if you look up the site, basically from what I've said, you'll be able to find it. But I was able to find out where it's at, do the Google Earth thing, and uh, realized, wow, this isn't that far away from me. And uh, I'm not going to give away any uh, spoilers because I think it's, I think it's kind of fun to find stuff like that. It takes a while with me because I'm not a techie at all. Uh, I can do research pretty good if I have time, but if I'm rushed, it doesn't work out. But just like I never thought I'd be doing any, never have a YouTube, never thought I'd have a YouTube channel and do, you know, vlogs or vlogs, whatever they call them. I call a vehicle video a vlog. I guess everybody calls them vlogs now. I thought vlogs were just like a brief, you know, right now video about just generally anything. But I'm doing a vlog because while I was looking up that place and found it and realized that I want to go look at it, plus also found out, not for certain, but it looks like somebody has already found out what they needed to from the local the realtor to South Sanderson Avenue. and um, has probably purchased it or taken it over or inherited it or however it works. I'm not big on property things yet. I've owned some property, sold some property, but Continue for definitely miles. not savvy. Well, you know, while I'm on Google Earth, I'll look up a couple places that I have been that I've heard about. Well, there's a property that my uncle had. I guess he's had several properties all over the Southland. Uh, and uh, he's got a property out near Wasteland Weekend, which is one of the places I'm talking about that we've been going. And I found out about it a couple years ago, and it was kind of one of those things. With me, unfortunately, I get told about something, and I just don't jump on it all the time. I just kind of wait around. Like a couple places that I've worked. Hey, I'm driving a boat here. It's raining quite a bit today, which is one of the reasons why I am taking a road trip. I feel a little better, but I can't do the work I want to do in this weather, so I've got everything scheduled for the weekend, which is fine. Um, I work for, have my own business and doing a couple different types of things. Um, one of them being the police cars. Um, my main business uh, relies on seasonal changes in the weather and who I work for uh, changes depending on what time of the year it is. 
So I decided, well, it's going to get really busy pretty soon. It's going to slow down around Christmas, but it's going to get real busy after that. It is busy right now, but there's a lot of jobs I can't do because of the weather. Well, this Roxanne is an all-wheel drive twin-turbo car with, you know, less than 40,000 miles on her. And I haven't taken a road trip that I can re remember yet. Um, I would like to be working in the shop on uh, Lola, which is going to be the Knight Rider car, which is a Wasteland Weekend Mad Max car. It's going to be just a Mad Max car above anything. I'm not... I'm tired of just taking a car out. I'm not tired of taking the car out there for the event, for the event, while I'm at the event. But I want a Mad Max car every day. I mean, that's been one of my dreams. It's on my bucket list. I like rock crawling. I want to go to Utah one day and go up on, you know, Lion's Back and all the, the rock crawling out there. I want to go on the Rubicon one more time. I've done it three times in a Toyota pickup truck with 38 inch tires and 529 gears and lockers and roll cage and sliders. Now I have a Jeep Cherokee that I really love. I'm, I'm, I never thought I'd turn to the dark side, I call it, and, and go to a Jeep, but it's a like, 1989 Jeep with over 200,000 miles on it, easy. And 35 inch tires, maybe two inches of lift. Just cut the wheel wells out, reposition the fender flares. So it doesn't look like it has much of a lift, but thing works good. So that's another thing on my bucket list. I want to go on the Rubicon one more time, and I want to go to Moab. So the other thing has been, I didn't know it really, I've, li I've loved Mad Max cars since I was a kid. Ever since the first, I saw an AMX Javelin um, when I was like 10 or 12 years old down the street from my house in Fairfax County, Virginia, which is in Pemmet Hills. Um, and, uh, you know, I saw this car, had a hood scoop on it, big tires on the back, raked out, primer black, and right along the sides of each side of the um, hood scoop on this car was, it said, the Road Warrior. I didn't know what it was. I mean, the Road Warrior had already been out because I was born in the early 70s, we'll say. Um, so, I'd be like Rodney Dangerfield. I go, I'm experienced, but I'm not old. Um, so, I uh, saw this car, and then I was just like, wow, that's amazing. That's so cool. You know, I didn't know anything about cars yet. I was just a kid. I was lucky if I get my chain back on my bicycle and fell off when I crashed, which I was good at crashing. You need anybody who knows how to crash a bicycle or a dirt bike, I'm the guy. Look me up. Um, I also want to be a stuntman one day, but I think I've already done all the stunts I'm ever going to do by accident. Back to where I was starting with the ADD here. I looked up Wasteland Weekend. Wasteland Weekend has moved. It was in California City, right down from the Boron plant on um, 20 Mule Team uh, Road or Expressway Highway. Um, and it was already out, and I, I would say, in the sticks, but there weren't any sticks out there because it was just barren desert. So, um, already out there, and 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 then found out about my um, uncle having this property. And my mom, who's always enthused about all this crazy stuff I do, my mom's one of the ones that when I'm just doing normal stuff that everybody else does she starts to worry. If I'm riding dirt bikes and crashing cars into other cars and doing demolition derbies and demo cross and backpack stuff, she's like, oh, my kid's okay. You know, I'm starting to worry here. He was keeping track of everything and, you know, going home every night and uh, sticking his nose in a book, which I've known to do. But because um, I know all the numbers in my alphabet, I'm pretty stuff. My mom finds out about me going to California City, and then she finds out about us going to this place 
I think my mom either brought it up at that time or she brought it up again because this last year was the first year since I've been going to Wasteland Weekend I couldn't go. I was super sick. I have crazy allergies and some other psychological problems. No, that doesn't have anything to do with it. No, I was physically sick. And uh, so me and my buddy couldn't go and I'd given him a car I couldn't finish because I um, was sick and I didn't have the resources to do it because I missed a lot of work. Um, got bitten by a dog at a job while I was sick, while I was on a bunch of really heavy duty like prendazone and stuff I can't even pronounce for what I've got going on, which was more than what I needed to be on, what I have going on. Here's a good drinking game. Whenever I say on, you drink a shot. You'll be messed up before the end of this video. So. I'm just at the point now where I'm finding out where this property is that belonged to my uncle who has passed on um, going on probably 15, 12, 15 years now. Um, and my mom had sent me the GPS coordinates. My smartphone is just full of so many random snapshots and pictures and everything. So. I just was looking through there and I'm like, hey, you know, I wonder where this place is that my mom told me about. So I looked it up. It's 17 miles from where Wasteland Weekend is. And my mom is just like, well, you know, we've been paying the property tax on it and it's in the family's name. So maybe one of these times you can go out there and take a look at it. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Well, I'm so wrapped up in going to Wasteland Weekend that Nothing else matters. Just stuff doesn't exist. Um, I'm just tunnel vision. So, with that being said, I'm looking at this really cool house on a cliff, find out where it's at, decide, hey, me and my buddy need to take a road trip out here because if we could get this place and it's in something that rhymes with another state, <laughs> I was going to tell you where that cliff house was, didn't you? So I know they've had some high winds there because in the video I could see parts of the roof of the house in the video laying down in a ravine off the cliff. So I guarantee you there's some high winds out there. So I decided, well, I'm going to go check out this property that's 17 miles away. I could have made that turn. Um, from where we go to this five, four to five day party in the desert doing Mad Max stuff with off-road cars that are street legal. My buddy's car was going to be my first attempt at making a completely legit street legal Mad Max police car. Well, it's finished and it's done. He doesn't have it street registered and stuff yet, but it was registered. I had it registered and I drove it around. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't cuss. I said, I don't give a truck. It was not a truck. It was a car. It looks like a truck. So if I were to sell it, I could give my truck away. A car truck. A police interceptor truck. So, which is what Lola's gonna end up in. So, I'm giving away a little bit on Lola because she's gonna end up being a Ford Taurus interceptor sedan with only the front doors and cab. All this section in here, the same car as what you're looking at right here, but right behind me, it's just gonna be a, a partition with a window or plexiglass in it. Um, so, the 
back end of it's actually going to be a pickup truck. So it's going to be like a Ford Taurus El Camino. It's going to look like one of these utilities. Man, I'm going all over the place, aren't I? So I'll finish what I'm doing with the car. In a quarter mile, turn left onto West Because I'm already there. And because I'm taking a drive. And I'm going to have some other videos. You're going to see where I'm going. And you know where I'm going anyways. I just told you, 70, 17 miles away from my son weekend. Undisclosed location to you. Anybody who doesn't know about Wasteland Weekend, so you'll see it and you'll find out about it if you're interested. Um, woo, railroad tracks. So, turn left onto West Fifth Street. I'm making basically what Ford doesn't have here in the States. They have them in Australia, they're called Utes. Um, they don't call them just sport utilities there or SUVs, they just call them Utes. So, um, Take the next left it appears to West that they have what looks like a ranchero in Australia. And the front of it looks like a Taurus or maybe a Fusion or something. And the back of it is a pickup truck. So it's like a ranchero slash El Camino thing. Um, Keep right at the uh, blue, John Blue GT, I think his site is. I'm sorry. I'm making a list. I'm going to check it twice when I start saying these guys channels right um he was talking about um ford possibly since they're getting out of the sedan market altogether, as in ford or sam but supposedly they're going to come out with ooh, supposedly they're going to come out with a four-door mustang possibly um and with lola which is one of these 2015 Ford Taurus police interceptors. I'm taking parts off of Lola so that I can sell the parts that are good and use some of the parts on Roxanne because Lola's just going to be a stripped down fuel injected suicide machine. Continue on I 10 West right for 16 miles. Be able to go. There is some rage and traffic, rain and accidents. My buddy told me he was supposed to go with me and, and uh, be my co-pilot, um, but he uh, he just worked all night and uh, all he'd probably end up doing is sawing logs next to me in the passenger seat, which would be fine, but I'm uh, basically what I'm doing with the car is I'm gonna make it kind of like a Mustang, Ranchero, Taurus. Because it's gonna be the best of all three worlds. It's gonna be an all wheel drive, twin turbo. It's gonna be pushing 400 horsepower when I'm done, which isn't pushing it that much because it's already like 380 horsepower. Um, that car actually has about 70,000 miles, so still, for a police interceptor, that's not bad. They usually retire them at about 100. Now, I've seen lately with the interceptor utilities and the Tauruses, I've seen them on auction sites from the departments finally being retired after like 150, 160,000 miles. So, either their expectations are higher or the actual longevity of the car has proved better, or maybe just Ford has promised them, hey, this is what you can get out of them, or maybe just money's tight, and they've decided to up the ante on the limited amount of time that used to be 100,000 miles that they could expect to get reasonable, reliable serviceability life out of an emergency vehicle. So, so I've got three of these Ford Taurus Police Interceptors. And one of them is going to end up probably being strictly four parts, which is uh, 2014. Um, it's from Atlanta, Georgia, and I've been slowly just taking parts off. I was trying to sell it online, but people want a perfect car that runs and drives and smokes. The car's been in a wreck. That's why I got it. I got it cheap. I've used a ton of stuff on it, off of it already. I've got the spotlight on this car, which is like brand new. LED spotlight. It's 450 bucks for one of these spotlights. And I think I bought the whole car for 450 bucks. Basically the same price I bought um, the Vixen. Vixen that 
my buddy has that we're talking about the 2008 Ford Taurus thing. I couldn't finish that he finished and made completely bitchin' when I just did a video on yesterday. So if you look it up, it's a 2008 uh, CVPI uh, Mad Max car, the, uh, the Vic Sam. Kind of like a play on Crown Victoria, but it's Vic Sam. So not Vic Sam like with an X. So that's cute and fast. I do that too well. Um, so I'm on my way out to a place that's 17 some odd miles away from my said weekend. I'm in the process of building a car that's a Taurus Ranchero Mustang. So it's not going to be a four door anymore because I'm actually pulling the rear doors off because one of the rear doors is in perfect shape and I can sell it for, for a decent amount of money. I'm actually using the parts I'm taking off the car to finance the build of the car. So that is the premise with Wasteland Weekend building a car. Try to build a car with no money or the money you spend maybe get back out of what the car doesn't need to be a post-apocalyptic, you know, Mad Max vehicle. So I'm going to try and see if that works. Because I've gotten so many parts off that, so that car that I put on here and it's going to be super easy to sell the rear seat, rear door panels, uh, rear carpet kit from one of these cars because when somebody buys a police car, 50 to 75% of the time when you get a police car that's been decommissioned and you're actually buying it from either the, part, the department or somebody who got it from the department to sell it, like an auction site, or actually a real auction where you go to and blah, 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 blah you know. I can't handle going to an actual auction. I just do it online with a proxy bid. But <coughs> the car is not going to have the back doors. I'm going to reskin the car all the way back. I might even try and find a beat up Mustang and put the rear quarter pedals from a Mustang because I'm just going to have the front doors, the interior of the front, the whole interior right here, and the cockpit, we'll call it, is going to be completely just gauges and tablets and readouts. What the fuck are you looking at, dude? You got... No, I don't think so. Try coming over. So, um, when it comes down to it, ooh, yeah, you don't look over here. I love when people see these cars, especially if it says police on the back of it. It's not my fault. The stickers are gone, but the images are left. And it says police interceptor on it. That's the brand the car is. And I said this before in videos, people really love to like taunt police cars that aren't police cars anymore because they almost feel like, almost like screwing with your dad when he's sick and old just to mess with him. But it's really sadistic the way they do it because like my dad, when he was older, you know, he could still kick my ass. Um, but if you like met like a ex-wrestler or an ex-boxer and they're all washed up and maybe you never liked them, um, you can say, oh, I, I kick this guy's ass now, you know? I think that's what the whole idea of it is. It's like there's people that really hate authority, especially these days. There are people, these freaking snowflakes, or I like to call them, sorry, the, the, the cussing I try to avoid, but shit flakes. Because they want all the shit that people worked for back in the day, and I'm going to sound like my dad here, they want all this shit that we had to work for and sweat and just hope that it would work out to get, And um, but they don't want to do anything for it because they know how to get past the effort, they're like, I, I expect this, these things, these things are available, and I want them, and I want them now, so that's what I run into with these people that don't like authority. They don't want to be told what to do. They don't want to be told when to do it. And they're never going to admit that at any point in time they need somebody to help them out. Because they've got help like that. Right on the internet. They don't need people. They don't need... Social Social networking will be the only friend they ever need. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see how that works. Next time they have to call 911 on YouTube. Um... So, anyways, 
So I'm building this car. This car now I'm trying to get away from looking like a police car at all, which I'm doing a pretty good job, but unfortunately there's a place on the back. The Mad Max car, the new one, um, is going to have total interior bone stock, but police car stock. I'm going to have center console, all the lights, all the strobes, all the LEDs, all the wig wags, everything. Um, I don't know if the car is going to be black and white. It's probably going to look like his car, but we're going to put the stainless steel paneling on the outsides of the doors, which are actually from some elevator doors, which we got from our buddy who's in Hawaii. Now he works on elevators. That's his, that's his business. And um, so he gave us some elevator doors that were not needed or discontinued. So there's just tons of this awesome stainless steel. So we're basically just building these cars that look like they could annihilate you just sitting in the Walmart parking lot. And uh, they're both street legal. And we go out to Wasteland Weekend and we wait around for sometimes 24 hours to a couple days just to get through the gates with the tickets to get lined up. And we always thought, wouldn't it be cool to be someplace nearby? Not like a hotel or a place like that, but an actual piece of property where we could show up early, close to the event, camp out, goof off, maybe make a couple quick videos, because it's so crazy at the event. I really can't believe how I haven't been able to make a video at the event to this day, and I've been to like five of them. Even with missing this last one, that's five events we've been to. So, it's really bitching that these guys have these events, and uh, they have the time and the effort and the editing that they do. It's just so awesome. So, I'm going to be able to concentrate more on the trip, and while I'm there, because I'm going to be in a car that I drove to the event, I'm going to a property, I'm going to look at to see the potential of it, of us maybe even just camping on it, even if it's just a flat barren strip of land. Even if it's not a lot, it's going to be a lot to me if there's enough room to go out there, park the cars, have some people with some RVs, chill out, hang out, and then just kind of roll into the event. There's a lot of people that go to the event that have been going to it from since the incarnation of it 10 years ago. It's going to be, 2019 is going to be the 10th anniversary of Wasteland Weekend out in the California desert. I mean, that's crazy. There's like 4,000 people that have gone, on average, I'm not exaggerating, on average the past two or three years. Um, the people who run the event, which are the same people that do Burning Man, um, which I'm not into, but hey, you know what? These guys are doing a bunch of events and you've got to deal with the fact that we're going to have this crossover of people with different lifestyles and different, I say lifestyles loosely, um, that are going to show up and intertwine with the event. They did move the events further apart because we had this funny name for the um, Burning Man people that would show up, we call them afterburners. Is there people already in town, maybe from out of the country, just out of the state, or from around the globe, would show up for Burning Man, and I'd see them when I was traveling back and forth, because some of my work takes me across country, and I'd stop at like a tavern or a market or something, and I'd see all these guys just covered with dust, bicycles that are painted 17 different colors of the rainbow, I don't know how many colors are actually in the rainbow, so I'm going to have to check that out. And that's how I found out about Wasteland Weekend, kind of, because I looked up Burning Man because I didn't know anything about it, and then I happened to come across stuff with Mad Max, and so there's an event out here that it's got 4,000 people now. I don't know how many people started. I think it was like literally a, a couple handfuls of people, maybe 20 or 30 people got together and started a type of event called like Mad Max Weekend not even, I mean, they was in California, but they were just making videos and hauling ass down barren parts of the desert and highways that weren't um, heavily congested, and I think the Highway Patrol just saw a bunch of influx of these people taking these gnarly cars dressed up in all this body armor and stuff, there are a lot of military vehicles that are going down the opposite side of the 210 um, so, so that's 
how it started. A bunch of people were getting together and doing like Mad Max scenario without even videoing it, I think, initially. Um, and they got busted, which kind of put them on the map, which is what most things do. Good news travels fast, but bad news travels at light speed. This place is still under construction. The last time we went to Waste Sun Weekend, which was two years ago, yeah, two years ago, they were still trying to fix this part of the highway. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it just evolved into this iconic thing. And when I say iconic, it's kind of like a con cosplay thing slash renaissance fair for like gearheads. I mean, the cars out there are so just redonkulous. So, and there's guys that take cars out there and drive cars out there that are kind of mild looking. And when they get there, they bring their tools and they take the doors off and bring a bunch, bunch of random materials. There's one guy who has a bunch of like 10 penny nails that he has magnets glued on one end. He shows up there with like this little Kia Sorento or something or Nissan Sentra. And um, he, he takes the doors off and covers it with mud, muck, and then puts all these nails on it. You know, and it's cool. It's, I dig it. I don't care what you do when you're out there. Just make it look like what you would do if you were out in the middle of nowhere. And Use the right two lanes to take exit 77. Get some stuff done. So, um, my cars are a little more involved than that. I wouldn't say they're the cream of the crop out there, but they're pretty damn close from just my perspective and what I've been told. Say no more, say no more. But, um, but yeah, I want to be able to drive a car out there completely in character, do the event, maybe stop at my property on the way there, the property. Um, I don't want to be all anxious about it, except for my property, the family's property, whatever we're going to do with it. Um, 